that's the noise we're trying to figure out. I'm not sure. I'm questioning whether it's an actual rod knock or a metal to metal noise coming from the internals or if it has something to do with the timing. Especially since we've been uh, having some issues with the timing, uh, getting random times where the cruise control kicks off or uh, the check engine light and EPC light will kick on and it'll go into lint mode and then it'll run fine. It's real sporadic. So we're going to troubleshoot the camshaft position sensors. So you can see the, uh, the specified and the actual. Are, the specified is not moving at all and the actual the only one is it's just by one degree. This is how it was when we had both of the new sensors put in and we're just taking it for a test drive right now we have the Volkswagen one on the exhaust side and the other one on the intake but it's unplugged we're gonna see what it does Now we plugged the intake position sensor, which is the non-Volkswagen one, back in, and now you can see our values. This one's fluctuating. This is the, the, the computer's uh, specifying, and this is what the sensor's reading. Same up here. So with it plugged in, just idling, you can see it'll change. So now we're gonna do a little drive. We got a little pinging and there's something going on knocking that we think is associated to one of these sensors. So this will be accelerating up a slight hill. Okay, so we went ahead and ordered a brand new camshaft position sensor directly from Volkswagen. You can see this is one of the old, this is one of the new ones I ordered when I did the timing equipment replacements. This is the Volkswagen one. You can see the VW logo on it. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Uh, so this is the Volkswagen, it's from a Volkswagen dealership. Here's the Volkswagen number, 030-907-601-E. And according to everything I've read, it's the same sensor for both sides of the, both camshafts. So what we're gonna do is test the resistance on it. 
and it's the two terminals on the outside. So I just have a lead here, attach it to one terminal. I have my voltmeter set to ohm resistance. We'll touch the other one. And we're getting four point, oops, sorry. 4.9695 milliohms. I'm gonna put it just in case this, um, if it changes with metal. So watch the. So that's the reading that we get on the new Volkswagen sensor. Now we're going to do the generic sensor and compare the resistance. Same test, same terminals. So let's see what the meter says now. So 4.04. .04. Ohms. Sorry, I bumped it. Let me try that again. So that's saying 4.04 .04 kilo ohms. If you notice the K next to it, this is M for milli ohms or mega ohms. That might be mega ohms. So there is a difference. So this is the aftermarket one. So we're reading 4.04 K ohms. Zoom in on that meter. Can you see the K ohms? Okay, so we'll go back and test the Volkswagen one. I think if I remember right, it said milli ohms. So, yep, so that's reading with it steady out at 4.96, 4.97 mega ohms or milli ohms. I'm not sure. I'll have to look at the meter. Okay, so I just pulled out the non Volkswagen sensor off the car and we're going to do an ohm test on it. Same leads, the two outside ones. And initially, it shows, if you watch the gauge, it shows open circuit right now. And then eventually it starts counting. So you can see it's kind of jumping all over the place. So we're at 40 kilo ohms there. 44. Now we're at two, two point nine mega ohms. There's no consistency at all. What I just found was like that's twenty three. So if I put my lead on the top of it and push towards the sensor tip itself, I get 27, 25 to 30 ohms. If I take my lead and push up away from the sensor tip, I get an open circuit. So it might be actually an issue in the in this at all. switch itself too. Okay, so let's go ahead and swap out. We'll replace this one. We'll replace this one with the new Volkswagen we got and do a test run. So we got the new Volkswagen sensor here. I'm just putting a little bit of oil, engine oil, on the O-ring so it doesn't pinch. 
And this is on the intake side. Your intake camshaft's on this side, driver's side. And your exhaust camshaft is on this side. The exhaust camshaft sense, position sensor is about right here. This one, I can reach around the back. You won't be able to see it on camera, but I'll show you. Once I slide it in, carefully without pinching that O-ring, you line up the holes by feel. Take your bolt, get it started with hand to, uh, by hand. I found that this set up here, a swivel, three inch drive ratchet with a three inch short extension and a number 10. Well, mine's a number 10. I think the fact the original one's a Torx 30. Uh, this one was missing several school screws. So I was able to find some metric bolts but if you use your Torx bit on here instead, come across and tighten it up. You don't want to over tighten it and break that bolt off. Okay, now I just got to find the pigtail plug and slide it back on. Sometimes this can be the tricky part. There we go. You want to make sure it goes all the way on and locks. So push back on the tab, make sure she's seated on there. All right, we'll get the keys and give it a run. I'll say it. Okay. Okay, okay so we're going to take it. We just changed out the camshaft position sensor that was non Volkswagen that kind of had a funny uh, reading when I was testing it. I think this terminal, there's probably a short or something in there. So we're going to test drive it. Right now we can see, I'll go over what we have. We got the exhaust camshaft duty cycle, the exhaust camshaft specified adjustment. That's what the computer's wanting. And this is the actual reading. And then same thing for intake. Intake camshaft uh, duty cycle. So when we first were driving this, we noticed the duty cycles were stuck. They were not changing at all until our long drive into town yesterday they started working so that was a good plus this one was fluctuating quite a bit oops didn't mean to take a picture of that but this one was fluctuating quite a bit uh but this should be our new sensor that we have here so we're going to test drive it and see how she runs she I don't, she sounds better but you'll be able to see how it changes as we accelerate this is just on our gravel road so i'm only going to do 15, 20 miles an hour, but we'll be accelerating here once we get on the road. changed so after these cars go we're gonna get on the highway and we'll do a good good acceleration up to 60 no check engine lights about 165 degree temperature coolant temp Maybe sometimes five 
uh, degrees difference. But now we can see that it's a lot tighter. So we're going to start climbing the hill. Troubleshooting a, what sounds like a rod knock or something. So we're gonna, it's, it's been sitting overnight. We're gonna start it now and then we'll listen to it. And then I'm gonna jack it up and try to listen to it up from the bottom set, side, see if we can confirm if it's a rod knock or something else. hear nothing right there sounds pretty good Well, it looks like replacing that camshaft position sensor with a, another Volkswagen one corrected the issue we were having where the cruise control would get kicked off randomly. Uh, check engine light would sh show up and then go away. I think there was a loose connection or terminal inside that sensor that was failing. So replacing that corrected that issue but did not have any effect on the noise that we're hearing. Uh, what we do know is at cold start it does not make any noises it's not until the engine oil is up to temperature rev it up. Uh, I have an idea what I think it is hopefully the next video will be able to confirm that but uh, let me know what you guys think the noise might be thanks for watching <laughs>